This morning, that some say may be proof we're not alone in the universe. A UFO in the form of a bright light is seen descending over the dome of the rock in Jerusalem. The Dome of the Rock, an iconic religious site in Jerusalem, is currently at the center of mysterious happenings that are capturing global attention. Witnesses have reported seeing unusual sights in the sky above the dome. This could mean the coming of the end of times. Witnesses claimed they saw a creature right out of the gates of hell. Join us to witness the incredible footage and hear the unknown stories from those who saw it. And we built a joint underground base on Mars. So is this object a UFO, a known craft, or a bit of video hocus pocus? Chapter 1. Latest Sightings on the Dome of the Rock Something strange and intriguing has happened close to the Dome of the Rock, making everyone feel a bit uneasy and curious. Everyone is asking, what's going on? The secret to understanding this lies in a never-before-seen event that has grabbed the focus of countless people around the world. We're about to explore the core of this mystery, aiming to reveal the facts about the spooky incidents happening near the Dome of the Rock. So, we're inviting you to join us in this video today to learn more about it. Jerusalem is a city that means a lot to Jews, Muslims, and Christians for a very special reason, the Temple Mount. This hill is deeply important to all three religions. But it's also a source of disagreement because both Palestinians and Israelis say it belongs to them. Now let's focus on the Dome of the Rock, a breathtaking piece of architecture. Muslims hold this beautiful dome in high regard. It was built by a leader named Abd al-Malik from 685 to 691 CE. How do we know the exact dates? An inscription inside the dome tells us it was completed around 691 to 692 CE, according to our calendar. Standing tall on a vast platform, this dome catches the eye with its octagonal base and shiny gold roof. It's about 65 feet wide and sits on a round base that's held up by 16 supports and columns. Surrounding the dome, there's a set of 24 supports and columns forming a ring around a very important rock. This rock is only partly shown and is protected by a barrier. There's also a set of stairs that take you down to a natural cave right below the rock. The sides of the dome of the rock have a unique octagonal shape, with each side measuring approximately 60 feet in width and standing 36 feet tall. These walls are not just structural elements. They include windows designed to let sunlight stream inside, brightening the interior with natural light. However, what truly makes the dome stand out are the elaborate decorations that cover both the inside and the outside of the building. The dome is embellished with detailed mosaics and metal plates that catch the eye of anyone who sees them. These mosaics are reminiscent of the art seen in old Byzantine buildings, known for their complexity and beauty. But there's a twist to these decorations. Unlike the Byzantine art that often includes images of people and animals, the mosaics on the Dome of the Rock feature no living creatures at all. Instead, they're filled with Arabic writings, patterns of flowers, and artistic representations of jewels and crowns. It's as if each tile tells part of a story, but it does so without depicting any living beings, relying instead on abstract and geometric designs to convey its message. Looking more closely, the octagonal arcade that wraps around the dome is intricately decorated with Arabic religious texts. These inscriptions are more than just decoration. They're like a story that's been carved into the very walls of the dome, inviting those who see them to ponder their meanings. Over its long history, the Dome of the Rock has seen many changes. Various Islamic groups have taken turns refurbishing and repairing it, each leaving their own mark on this historical monument. For instance, during the time of the Crusades, a simple iron barrier was put up around the sacred rock in the center of the dome. This was done to keep Christian visitors away. But later on, this iron barrier was replaced by the Ayyubids with a more refined wooden screen, which has remained there up to the present day. This ongoing care and attention to detail in the dome's preservation reflect the deep respect and reverence that people have had for this site across different periods and cultures. With the mystery at the Dome of the Rock only deepening, we peel back the layers of history to uncover secrets buried in time. Chapter 2. 
the Dormition of the Mother of God. The Dome of the Rock is widely celebrated for its historical link to the Prophet Muhammad's ascension to heaven. However, it's interesting to note that the inscriptions inside the dome don't directly reference this significant event. Back in the 9th century, there were some mentions of the dome's connection to the Prophet's heavenly journey, but it wasn't until the 11th century that this idea really took off and became a popular belief. The exact reasons behind the construction of the Dome of the Rock are shrouded in mystery. The details of its construction and the intentions behind its design are not well documented. It stands out because it doesn't resemble a typical mosque. It's not designed for congregational prayers like most mosques are. This uniqueness sets it apart from other Islamic architectural works. The design of the dome seems to be an attempt to link Islamic tradition with the story of Abraham and other religious narratives. It shares similarities with Byzantine structures known as martyria, which were circular or multi-sided buildings erected to commemorate significant religious events or the lives of saintly figures. There was a specific building, built in 1992, which was an eight-sided martyrium and might have served as inspiration for the dome's design. The architects of the Dome of the Rock possibly aimed to rival the splendor of Christian sacred sites in Jerusalem, notably the Church of the Holy Sepulchre with its prominent dome. Their goal might have been to construct a monument that was equally majestic. The Arabic inscriptions on the dome feature Quranic verses emphasizing the oneness of God and challenging Christian views about Jesus. There's a historical theory suggesting that the Umayyad Caliph Abd al-Malik built the Dome of the Rock intending to divert the Islamic pilgrimage from the Kaaba in Mecca to Jerusalem due to conflicts in Mecca at the time. However, contemporary scholars largely dismiss this theory, considering it to be influenced by biases against Abd al-Malik present in historical records. Evidence indicates that pilgrimages to Mecca continued even during times of turmoil, suggesting the dome was not intended as a replacement for the Kaaba, but perhaps served other spiritual or political purposes. One idea is that the Dome of the Rock was constructed because of a belief in its significance for the Day of Judgment. Some scholars suggest that its architectural style and ornate design indicate that those who commissioned and built it regarded it as an important site for the end times. This makes the Dome of the Rock significant not only to Muslims, but also to people of other faiths. It is located on the Temple Mount, which is the historical site of the Jewish Temple in Jerusalem. For Jews, the foundation stone found within this area, possibly beneath the dome itself, is believed to be the starting point of creation. Historically, during the times of the Crusades, Christian knights made their base there following the capture of Jerusalem, and the design of the Dome of the Rock influenced the architecture of churches back in Europe. The construction of the Dome of the Rock is often interpreted as symbolizing a monumental event like the Apocalypse and serving as a bridge between the divine and the earthly realm. Its construction, appearance, and decorative elements are thought to reflect Islamic and Byzantine conceptions of Judgment Day. For Jews, the Temple Mount holds historical significance as the location of the first and second temples, with evidence supporting this view not only found in their sacred texts, but also in archaeological findings. A significant earthquake hit the Dome of the Rock not too long ago, which provided archaeologists with a unique opportunity to excavate and examine its base. Surprisingly, during their exploration, they uncovered artifacts dating back to the era of the Second Temple. However, this discovery has only added to the complexity of the historical narrative, as Muslims and Jews each have deep-rooted beliefs and narratives about the site that are difficult to reconcile. It's akin to attempting to complete a jigsaw puzzle with several pieces missing, making the situation highly sensitive and contentious on a daily basis. The fear among Muslims is that the Israeli government might one day decide to target the Dome of the Rock using missiles. In an effort to prevent any escalation of tensions, access to the Al-Aqsa Mosque area is restricted for Jewish visitors, especially during significant religious holidays and observances. This precaution aims to maintain a fragile peace and prevent any incidents that could inflame tensions further. The situation remains delicate, with historical claims and modern-day fears intertwining to create a complex and challenging scenario for all involved. 
From ancient enigmas to contemporary turmoil, the narrative shifts to a recent conflict that ignites tensions during a time of sacred observance. Chapter 3. Ramadan Chaos at Al-Aqsa Recently, a very upsetting event happened at the Al-Aqsa Mosque compound, a very important religious place that includes the Dome of the Rock. This happened during Ramadan, a holy month. Things got really tense when a group of Palestinians decided to hide their faces and stay overnight in the mosque area. They started a conflict by throwing stones, firecrackers, and different things at the Israeli police there. This made the situation worse, and the police had to use tear gas, stun grenades, and clubs to try to get things under control. This caused a lot of confusion and trouble. During this chaos, some people with their faces hidden went into one of the mosques in the compound. They locked themselves in and kept acting violently, throwing stones at the police from inside. This whole situation made the tension worse and showed how serious the conflict was during a time that's usually about respect and peace. It was a clear reminder of how complicated and unstable things are at this holy place, especially at a time when there should be peace and spiritual focus. This fight is part of a long and complicated struggle over control of this holy place, which made the conflict even worse. When the violence started, the Israeli police went into the mosque compound to catch those causing the trouble. This was very difficult, and about 160 Palestinians got hurt. One of the injured was a security guard who was hit in the eye with a rubber bullet. The chaos affected everyone. Unexpectedly, four women, 27 children, and even a journalist were among the injured. The Israeli police got hurt too, including one officer who was seriously injured. This all happened despite an earlier agreement that no one would stay in the Al-Aqsa compound overnight during Ramadan. This leads to the question, why did the Palestinians break the agreement? Why did they do things that put themselves and others in danger? They were really scared. They were worried that if the Israelis took full control of the site, they might be kicked out of an area important for their religion. This makes us wonder if their fears were valid. Was there really a need for violence? Can this conflict be solved without violence? To understand this, we need to look at why this site is so important for both Jews and Muslims and understand its historical and religious value. The area known as the Temple Mount is very special to both Jewish and Muslim people. It's closely linked to their religious history and traditions. Its importance started about 1,000 years before Christ, when King David, the ruler of Israel, took over Jerusalem and made it the country's capital. He had a big dream for this place. He wanted to build a temple there, a holy place to keep the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant isn't just a box. It's very sacred, especially because it held the Ten Commandments, which are very important and form the foundation of the Jewish faith. The story of this place shows the strong historical ties and deep spiritual connection both religious communities have to it. It helps us understand why the Temple Mount is a topic of argument and why the fear of losing access to such an important place of worship can lead people to take extreme steps. The importance of the Temple Mount goes beyond history. For followers of both religions, it's a real expression of their faith. This place isn't just land. It's a symbol of dedication and a point where their historical and religious stories meet, making it a key part of their spiritual identity. This deep connection shows why the Temple Mount is more than a historical site. It's an essential part of the religious life and heritage for Jews and Muslims, representing a sacred space they both share, but also fight over, influencing how they interact and behave towards it. In the aftermath of the conflict, a groundbreaking discovery beneath the dome promises to rewrite the chapters of our shared history. Chapter 4. Secret Chambers Revealed Beneath the Dome Step into a fascinating mystery that really challenges what we think we know about history. This mystery highlights a discovery that is both amazing and shocking, creating a sense of wonder and respect in even the most experienced experts and fans. Hidden beneath the famous Dome of the Rock is a secret room, a hidden place full of old knowledge that has been kept secret from the world for many years. As researchers look more closely and uncover more details, they find objects and historical items that are hard to explain. 
giving us a glimpse into an old world that is mysterious and difficult to understand completely. Imagine finding an old manuscript, its pages turned yellow and worn out over time, covered with symbols that are unlike any known language. The significance of this discovery is as deep and mysterious as the sacred place where it was found. Finding such a room, filled with historical treasures that have been missed for so long, raises many questions about our past, how we understand knowledge, and the mysteries that have lasted over time. It makes us think again about what we believe about history, and opens new ways to explore our shared history. This secret room, hidden under one of the world's most respected religious places, gives us a real connection to the past that not many other discoveries do. Each item, each mysterious thing found there, is like a piece of a puzzle in the huge picture of human history. The discovery under the Dome of the Rock is truly amazing and a bit overwhelming. It's not that it's a physical danger, but it completely changes how we understand history. The secrets hidden under this famous place make us question what we have always thought was true in history. We are at an important point in the study of archaeology and history, dealing with the fact that the stories we have been taught might not tell the whole truth. This new information is shaking the foundation of our knowledge of history, making us question what we have always thought about the past. Finding these secrets under the Dome of the Rock changes everything, making us doubt what we were sure about in our history. It shows that the story we thought was complete might actually have more to be discovered. Even though the Dome of the Rock is usually seen as a peaceful symbol, a shocking and worrying event happened there not long ago. In a surprising incident, snakes came out from under the temple during a prayer gathering, causing fear and panic among the people praying. This unexpected event during such a holy time has left those who were there feeling shocked and worried. The appearance of snakes at this time makes us think deeply about what they mean. In religious books like the Bible and the Quran, snakes often have meanings related to death, danger, and evil. They bring out a basic fear in people, representing not just physical poison, but also the idea of something that can cause harm or corruption. In the story from Genesis in the Bible, the snake is shown as a symbol of Satan himself. This creature is portrayed as good at tricking people, leading them away from the right path. This image is similar to other parts of the Bible, where Satan is often described as an old serpent. Even though snakes are usually seen as symbols of trickery and evil, in some cultures, they are seen as symbols of rebirth, change, and positive transformation. In the Christian faith, the initial image of the snake as a symbol of human temptation and downfall is changed by Jesus Christ's teachings. In this new light, the snake becomes a sign of healing, being saved from sin, and a new spiritual start, which reminds us of resurrection and new beginnings. This new way of seeing the snake as both a sign of danger and a source of hope for healing and starting over adds a complex layer to how it is seen. Especially in religious stories like the one at the Dome of the Rock, the two meanings of the snake make us think more deeply about its importance, pushing us to really explore its deeper message and what it means. When talking about spiritual battles, people are often encouraged to think of themselves as fighters, facing invisible dangers that hide under sacred places, much like poisonous snakes under a place of prayer. They are asked to join together in fighting the bad influences around them. In these stories, Jesus Christ is shown as the greatest hero, bringing peace and unity among people. His work is seen as having a wide effect, going beyond Jerusalem to other holy places, including the Kaaba in Mecca. However, how people see Jesus' actions differs a lot between different religions. Some see his teachings as a way to connect different groups, while others might not pay attention to these messages because of differences in religious teachings. Even with different beliefs, the warnings Jesus gave about the coming of an evil leader, often called the Antichrist, are important to many. These warnings are a call to stay alert and come together to face future challenges. This idea highlights the need for being aware and working together, no matter what religion you follow, underlining a common theme of being ready and supporting each other when facing dangers. It's a reminder that, despite our different beliefs, we all share the need to get ready and face hard times together, 
emphasizing the idea of unity against possible threats. As we look deeper into this mystery, the sky above Jerusalem shows us something that makes us question what we believe and doubt. Chapter 5. UFO Sightings Over the Holy Land Whoa! <laughs> On the chilly evening of January 28, 2011, an extraordinary event was observed in the skies of Israel. A person noticed an unusual formation of lights, often called a UFO or unidentified flying object. As they kept watching, they saw a group of lights forming what appeared to be a bright orb hanging in the sky. Amazed by this strange phenomenon, the observer managed to record it on their camera. For roughly 20 seconds, this enigmatic light descended closer to the earth, floating just above some buildings. Then, it shot up into the night sky at an incredible speed, reminiscent of the speed of light. This odd occurrence happened right above Jerusalem, and more specifically, over the Dome of the Rock, or the Temple Mount. This place is of great historical and religious importance to Christians, Muslims, and Jews. It's famous for being the location of many key events in the Bible and the Quran, like when God tested Abraham to sacrifice his son, Solomon building the first temple, Jesus confronting the money changers, and Prophet Muhammad's ascension to heaven. Interestingly, seeing unidentified flying objects, UFOs, in Jerusalem's sky isn't a rare event. In fact, it's quite common. Residents of Jerusalem are often seeing these strange objects in the sky. There's a new report of such sightings every year, leaving everyone puzzled about what's really happening up there. In 2022, an American drone in the Middle East captured something unusual in the air, a shiny metal sphere-like object. What's fascinating is that these UFOs are not always visible to everyone. Those attempting to record these objects on their smartphones are frequently left disappointed, as the footage is usually blurry. It seems our phones just aren't capable enough to capture clear images or videos of distant objects in the sky. When videos of UFOs over a renowned landmark in Jerusalem began circulating online, people were curious about who recorded these mysterious clips. The unknown identity of the videographer led to a lot of skepticism. Usually, if someone witnesses something truly unusual, they're quick to share it with others. But the anonymity of the person who recorded these videos has led to much curiosity and doubt. Some people even think that maybe all these videos were made by the same individual. This theory casts a significant doubt over the authenticity of the videos. One would expect that a person who saw and filmed such an extraordinary event would be eager to share their story with the world. The entire situation has raised numerous questions and curiosity about the nature of these sightings. It's not just about who filmed the videos. What's even more mysterious is that it seems only those who recorded these events witnessed the lights. The Dome of the Rock in Jerusalem is a well-known and holy site, attracting many people daily, including tourists interested in religious history. However, despite the potential for thousands of people to be nearby when these videos were taken, no one else has claimed to have seen these bright lights, making the whole scenario even stranger. In one of the videos, a woman remarks on the intensity of the light, saying it was almost painful to look at. But here's an even stranger detail. The light didn't seem to illuminate the golden dome directly below it. This peculiarity has led some to speculate that the UFO light might have been digitally added to the video later. Adding a simple light effect to a video is much easier than creating a detailed UFO with complex features like windows or shadows. This ease of manipulation makes the videos seem even more dubious. The debate over these Jerusalem UFO videos is fierce, with people firmly on both sides. Some believe the videos are real, while others are convinced they're fake. The believers haven't provided more convincing evidence than the skeptics. In scientific discussions, it's not enough to simply say something is untrue. If you're going to dispute a claim, you need a better explanation that fits all the evidence. This principle is what makes the debate around these videos so intense and complicated. When you take a closer look at the videos that are said to show a spaceship from another world, you can see that the spaceship looks quite small. It's especially tiny when you compare it to the big dome that it's supposed to be flying over. The spaceship that people are talking about is only about 15 feet long. That's very small for something that is supposed to have come from far away in space. Experts, 
like Robert Schieffer, who has spent a lot of time looking into reports of UFOs, are sure that these videos aren't real. Schieffer has found clear signs that the videos were changed using computers. The person who made these videos added in effects to make it look like the camera was shaking, and this is really easy to see at the edges of the video. This kind of change suggests that the video wasn't just put online straight from the camera. Instead, it was changed using advanced software. When someone is really good at editing, they can make it look like whatever they can think of is really happening. This raises big questions about whether the videos are actually true. Since these videos came out, there's been a lot of arguing about whether they're real or not. Some people really want to show that UFOs are real, and they insist that these videos are genuine. But when others who are more doubtful ask hard questions, the people who believe in the videos often can't give strong proof to back up what they're saying. This has led to a lot of arguing, with each group sticking to their own opinions. Even with all this talk, no one has been able to give clear proof that would end the argument once and for all. From celestial wonders back to earthly disputes, the stage is set for a final confrontation over the most contested piece of land in human history. Chapter 6. The Battle for Sacred Ground The phrase, abomination of desolation, is a term from the Bible that describes a time of extreme hardship and persecution. It's specifically mentioned in the book of Daniel and also by Jesus. It signifies a time of intense evil and destruction. This term is linked to a key moment in prophecies about the end of the world. It involves placing something very offensive in a sacred place, which leads to a lot of shock and sadness. When faced with such difficult times, many Jewish people hold on to the hope that the Third Temple will be rebuilt in Jerusalem. This isn't just a wishful thought for them. It's believed to be the completion of prophecies from long ago. For Christians, this future Third Temple is also very important. They believe that Jesus will return there, which is a crucial event in their faith. At the same time, Muslims are looking forward to this place because they believe it's where the Mahdi, a highly honored figure, will emerge to establish justice and peace. The plan to build the third temple, where the Dome of the Rock currently stands, a holy site for Muslims, causes a lot of conflict. This situation involves a mix of history, religion, and politics. It affects not just individuals, but also the relationships between countries. It forces us to recognize and respect the different views people have as we try to find common ground in a world that is very connected and complicated. Is what appeared by the Dome of the Rock a sign of otherworldly intervention or a marvel of natural phenomena yet to be understood? What implications does this event hold for our understanding of the universe and our place within it? Share your thoughts and theories, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more.